All right, people, what is this? What is this that I am placing my eyes on? Why, that is the shoulder of a Tesla robot. Elon Musk unveils surprise robo-van at flashy Tesla event, says Optimus humanoid robots will cost less than a car. I noticed it had number 34. Why would you put a number on a robot? Hmm. Why would God let us know in Revelation 13 that man in the future won't be able to buy or sell without the mark? Our number is a mark in the future. Elon Musk again unveils surprise robo van at flashy Tesla event. This was yesterday, people. Says Optimus humanoid robots will cost less than a car. Let's explore that 34. That 34. 34, as in March 4th, 3 4. That's the 63rd day of the year. Doesn't the Bible talk about 666? What do you mean, Pearson? 63rd. 3 6 is 666. Let me see here. Does it? Does the Bible talk about 666? Yes, the Bible mentions the number 666 in Revelation 13, 8. States that it's the number of the beast, which is also the number of the man. 666. Well, I'll be. A Tesla robot with March 4th on it? And March 4th comes up to the 63rd day of the year? Which in my mind is 366666. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am French Chat Pearson, and welcome again to French Chat Blue. October 11th of 2024. Happy Friday, 12, 10 in the p.m. Well, Elon Musk, this quote-unquote genius of a guy of our lifetime in which the powers allegedly are utilizing to computerize us, to have us conform into a one-world cyber electronic computerized global system. You, you fill in the blank. Hmm. On the campaign trail with Trump, he decided a few months ago to start backing Trump. I've done the videos. Check them out. Is this the guy to bring in the 666 mark? Anyway, let's look at um, this event that he had yesterday. This event. Oh, yeah. Elon Musk unveiled Tesla's long-awaited self-driving taxi at a high-anticipated event in California Thursday night and had a few other high-tech surprises up his sleeves. Musk rode up the stage in the long-awaited driverless, that is driverless, cyber cab. Can you believe it? Revealing a two-seated seater with no steering wheel for pedals. Wait a minute. No steering wheel, no pedals, <laughs> and it will cost less than $30,000. That's what they're selling, people. During the event titled We Robot at Warner Brothers Studio. How many of you guys uh, and girls out here, you just love your car? And you mechanics just like tinkering on the old ones, the old Mustangs, right? Your Jeeps, your vans, your buses. How many of y'all just like your engines and your batteries? You, I mean, do we get a chance to vote on this new technology? Why are they leading us there? You know, no gas. Kind of uh, makes you wonder, is this in connection with uh, what Joe Biden did about, what, 10 weeks ago with Saudi Arabia? We don't have to have a contract with you guys, uh, turns you guys buying our debt. Uh, we'll buy your oil and we'll supply, we'll supply you with, um, 
uh, security with our armed forces, but we can we can scrap that deal that happened with Henry Kissinger. Is that because we're going to go without cars in the future with these 15 minute cities? I would I would think so. Yeah, it all it all kind of relates. And this is the man that spearheaded one of the men to spearheaded, right? Wow. But a never before seen 20 person RoboVan also made its debut along with the newest generation of Tesla optimism, Optimus robots. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right. All right. This happened yesterday. I think, uh, I think you're going to like it. Uh, as you can see, I just uh, arrived in the robo taxi, the cyber cab. And uh, there's uh, 20 more where that came from. So they've been traveling. They're all, there's no people in them, as you can see. The car's just going by with no people. And we have, uh, we have 50 fully autonomous cars here tonight. Uh, so you'll see Model Ys and the Cyber Cab, uh, all driverless. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to take a ride in the cyber cab. There's no steering wheel or pedals. So I hope this goes well. <laughs> I think the, the cost of autonomous transport will... Do you get the uh, creepy feeling that um, the powers are utilizing uh, Donald Trump through his campaign to reintroduce... Uh, Tesla slash robot slash Musk. And now it's Musk's turn to be in the uh, spotlight, showcasing the future of our transportation and our 15 minute cities. Do you think it was all planned that way? It, it appears they're just slowly introducing everything, everything. Right, Obama, I guess in a sense introduced uh, Trump, hope and change. Think about it. And then Trump has been talking about the golden age. He's introducing that. Think about it, people. Wrap your mind around it. Obama said hope and change. Well, when you think about it, to me, that's, that's futuristic. Because we're seeing the change now. Elon Musk and then Trump talking about the golden age, which to me is the sun god, Ra. Hmm, one introduces the other, huh? And Trump is introducing Elon, and Elon bought Twitter for $44 billion. And, and uh, who was the 44th president? Barack Obama. And arguably, he bought it 84 days uh, before Barack Obama's birthday, and Barack Obama was born August 4th. It's all tied together, baby. It's, it's, it's kind of all tied together. What do you think? I digress. Thing you need to know. Now, one of the things we wanted to show tonight was that Optimus is not a canned video. The Optimus robots will walk among you. Elon Musk and Tesla held their We Robot event at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California. After dropping two brand new self-driving cars, Musk introduced several Optimus Gen 2s and laid out his vision for human-humanoid relations. It'll be able to do anything you want. So it can be a teacher, babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks. I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. What's really new about all this Optimus footage is the fact that people are getting a chance to interact with these robots, which is important for building trust especially if these things are meant to go into people's homes. The robots handed out gift bags and drinks similar to previous skills we've seen from the robots in Tesla's promotional videos. Dancing. That just made me think, people, uh, they're gonna come into your house. You know, affordability. Will the upper middle class and the rich only have this? Well, how do we fit into the factory? Uh, the, 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 great, the great populace, how do we fit into it? Right? They're gonna try to spin this thing and put it in, uh, Get it going in the whole world, but how do how do we really fit? Will these be Satan's little children? 
I just thought I'd throw that out there allegedly. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Wouldn't you like to ride in my beautiful balloon? Here we go. So when you get into the car, put a seatbelt yeah. on, okay. select the destination, and then uh, start the ride. Okay. As soon as I buckle up, the door closes. Select the destination. Uh, how about this? Uh, New York. Why not? Okay. Everything computerized, people. No pedals. No rear view mirror. No steering wheel. No pedals. A lot of people watching. Goes around the corner. You know, people, it's one it's, it's one thing to think about the possibility of giving up your sovereignty as a nation and conforming to a one world system under the, under the United Nations. It's another thing to hypothetically give up your freedom and you get into a car where you have no control of and you're giving your will and your body and your mind, your spirit over to this electronics. It's like it becomes your God, doesn't it? And if the mo if the wrong if the sinister person gets a hold of this type of device, you can be entrapped in that thing. I'm just putting it out there. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot. It's a ton of benefits, but I'm just thinking. You know, hey, I, to me, it's designed for the 15 minute cities. It's, it's and uh, it's all about control. If you don't if you don't comply, is there like a cyber base set up like it is in China? If you don't act right, you only get X amount of miles or no miles at all in this thing uh, because you have gone against the uh, will of the, the state. If you're doing misinformation, uh, do you get less rides out here? No transportation, can't fly, can't get on the mega bus. I don't know. Their package and people are talking inside there right now. So I went over and checked out the van it's very, very cool. That's obviously a long distance vision of the future for Tesla, but it's a very fully fleshed out prototype. It has the cameras in the positions you'd expect them to be. It looks very, very good and the seats inside look great. That's obviously very intentional on their part to not make some kind of prototype that doesn't look like it could possibly come out. This looks like it actually could be something that's on the road in the future. But the robo taxis, everything is still just roaming around the lot. It's still just a really cool experience to be here right now. And then you go over to what is considered the Westworld area, and that's where all the Optimus robots are. There are Optimus robots dancing in sync with each other, and then there are robots serving drinks. There's one serving cookies to somebody, and then there's ones just walking around that you can fully interact with. And I did a little bit. They do talk, but that I'm not sure if that's working autonomously. If it's oh, and look at him. He's got 36. He had 34. Wow. He had 34, which is uh, March 4th, like the 63rd day of the year. And this guy's got 36. I didn't know that. 36 is 666. Uh, how unusual is that? Are these robots speaking without speaking? Are these going to be gods? I'm not feeling this, first of all. I mean, I, if you want a big toy, you go ahead and do your thing. But to sell it to the whole world that we need to conform to this because we're going to have a lack of energy or whatever the reason is in the future. I mean, again, I'm not for all advancements. What's wrong with what God made? If you're in this industry, tell me if you like it or not. The good, bad, the ugly. Why not just interact with a child and develop a child and you learn your neighbor? I don't need a robot making me drinks. I don't, I don't need all that. I, I don't, swapping out convenience. And I, I'm just, I'm not feeling this transformation, people. I'm really not feeling this.
And between these numbers, number 34 and 36, from what I'm seeing, I'm assuming there's other numbers, but these, these two numbers, they're kind of creeping me out. Oh, tell you, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So, we talked about that. Uh, there's some calculation I want to get into. Now, I want to go back to this. I've been featuring this off and on. This is um, Shalom Girl. Interviewed her a year plus ago. It was on my last channel, Friendship Pearson. However, this this is also on um, on Rumble. Okay, up on Rumble under Friendship Mike. She was the nanny. She says of Elon Musk, and I don't see anybody out out, out there so far denying it. Around 2017, she said she had to come out and start telling people that she was told allegedly by Elon's mother that he will present the mark. He will present the mark, right, of 666. And as, as soon as they develop something for their brain, uh, I'm just kind of uh, improvising here and what she was saying, paraphrasing, you know the Antichrist is at hand and the kingdom is at hand. It's coming. So I want, I want to play some of this uh, from my Rumble site. This one's called Elon Musk for my nanny interview part two. Again, you go to Rumble, please subscribe. French shot Mike, one word. One word, French shot Mike. And uh, here we go. Listen to this here. Well, tell me something. So you've known, you met Elon Musk over 40 years ago. You've had a chance to just I guess marinated on a method, and it, uh, and if I if I'm if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, you start coming out about what you saw and what you put together. What five years ago now? Approximately 2017, I wrote the president a letter and said, "Please don't implicate me in the crimes. I was a hostage." And so and so, what made you come out? What made you come out and, and talk about Elon? I mean, Elon is surfacing. I mean, but he. I, in, in, in the video I just showed, um, the question is, the question was, was Elon the Antichrist? He said, no, he's going to be the one that presents the right. mark to the Antichrist. Exactly. So, that's so, what told me. so if that's the case, Elon already knows the Antichrist, and Antichrist has got to be a lie. I, I would assume. Would assume. I, you know, I've been doing, okay, I believe since I've been through some veil to the other side, against my will. Okay. And I didn't get to that actually. Um, I was talking to a sister in Christ yesterday and she said, why do you think it is that God shows you things? And I said, because it wouldn't be fair that I had to go to hell and that it wouldn't, and wouldn't be blessed. You know, it wouldn't be fair if God, if God just left me there. He's such a good God. I cried out to Jesus and he saved me. He brought me back. Right, right. So, and so, so, so I have dreams in the celestial, and I think you know because God, God wouldn't want to leave me with just the the scary facts. He would want to show me the other side of that horrible coin, right? I have this feeling from the from my research that 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 Satan is bringing in the end time his best of the wickedness. So what I'm saying is that I believe his best of the wickedness was. The uh, sun god Ra and Akhenaten. I mean, why bring a substitute? Why not bring your best? And and Ra, the sun god, arguably along with Akhenaten, you know, kind of rival. And so what I'm thinking and what I'm seeing when I do a lot of decodes, I'm seeing a lot of the Akhenaten, the Egyptian, the sun god. So as I hear you speak, I'm saying to myself, look, I believe the Holy Spirit is telling us. That, that what Satan has done, he's actually brought the past to the future and he's, um, what's the word? He's masqueraded it right in our face, but he's done it in such a way that if you don't history, you don't even, you can't even pick it up. Right, you've done a very good job with decoding the colors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, could I ask, I think it's just a side note, we don't have to talk about real life, but Aragon, since you did that, I looked at my family crest. There's a dragon on the head. There's always a dragon on the head. Okay. 
Um, they must told me we were the dragon riders. Um, one of my family castles. May Musk told her we're the dragon riders. Uh, May, May West is um, that's Elon's mom, I believe. One of the places they used to take me to take blood out of my neck. Three miles south of San Francisco, there's a castle. You heard right, like Dracula, taking blood out of her neck. She said that's what used to happen to her. And it's got... It's got, of course, you know, phoenixes and griffins, and and it's got mermen, the beast that rises out of the sea, gargoyles, of course. Wow. You know. Wow. Uh, but I, I believe <laughs> the Greek history, the Greek mythology, is possibly Greek history. Yeah, it's mixed. And they are coming back. And they're coming back. So they're they're, they're literally, not figuratively, bringing these gods back to rule and reign. They're going to have a station doing the, I'm assuming doing the tribulation because I'm I'm seeing a lot of the um, the uh, the other gods, uh, Luna gods and things when I decode. I'm seeing Luna gods a lot. Well, you know, I was I missed a flight. Well, I went out to walk my dog at about two in the morning, and I looked up at the full moon, and there was a serpent swallowing it, swallowing its tail around the moon. Really. You saw that you saw so you saw a serpent swallowing swallowing its tail in the moon. Did you see that in spirit or you saw it literally? I I literally saw it like if I was standing next to somebody I would want to tap them and say, Do you see that? Because I see that. It was around the moon. Now there's been there's and you know what I wonder um, I live at the top of somewhere that's called Portal Street below me. I'm at the top of a hill. Uh, I wonder. I mean, I've taken pictures. There's a picture I took outside. There's a big square, and there's a cloud. It's, it looks like there's a dragon running through the square. It's literally, you're looking at a window in the sky, and it looks like I photoshopped it. I didn't photoshop it. Things are just happening. You know, we're seeing them happen, right? Sure. Let me, let, let, let me ask you this, as it relates to the past and the future. When I look at Twitter and I see it as X now, why do you, I'm, I'm theorizing here, why do you think he changed it to X? Because I think he's hinting at Y. He's dying, he's dying to come in and call it Y. Because I don't think he has the Y DNA, brother. When I was a girl, I came in like, Pete, I just, I just think it's hilarious now because even the child would know what he's doing, you know? The word tells us. So I came in at some point, and I don't know what he was doing because my sister called him E. I don't know what he was doing. So what is what? So so what is so what does X mean to you? X, I think mm -hmm. he's just hinting at why. He's he's hinting at why. He's hinting at why. Just hinting at why because I've been saying publicly. He's going to add the Y back into his name and declare himself God. He's making it normal. Since I said he's going to do that, he started hinting at M. He started he wants he really wants to sneak up on that Y. Listen, this is weird, but I think this is absolutely correct. When I was a girl, I said, Is he one of his grandfather's experiments in the lab next door? And my aunt slapped me, just kinda of like, Shut up and get back to work because I was weighing up large amounts of drugs. Um, I said, is he one of his grandfather's experiments? Because he wasn't human. And you could, even a child could tell something is wrong. It's not that he has Asperger's. It's nothing like that. And, and, and just for the record, I, I had a two-year-old cousin. So I know how tall a two-year-old is. I know, you know, how they act. They, 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 they can't talk good, they're little. Elon was as tiny as a two-year-old in 1978. He was tiny, but he grew, he grew fast. Wow. He went from two to 12 in like three years. Really? He went from two to 12? He, so let me repeat that. So you're saying that Elon Musk went from, from, two, from two to three years old to 12 in three years? Correct. How is that possible? I'm saying in size, he went from my knees to my breast. Oh, okay. Up to my neck. You know, he was not even my neck. He went, he was below my eye level. He was, he was, 
he was saying things that were terrifying me because he, can I tell you what he said to me? Well, I know, I know you had said in one interview that his eyes turned black, cold black. Yes, when we were in the sun. Like if I was in the shade, if I was, his, his mother's house was always dark. Right. She had blackout curtains. I've never seen blackout curtains before. His mother's house was always dark and they never jumped on me. You know, would you, would you let a babysitter burn incense and light candles while you're gone? <laughs> no. Yeah. Insane, right? But I did because it was dark in there. You had to have it dark in there. Right? So I wouldn't know it if we were in the dark and his eyes were doing that, but in the sunlight and his eyes did that? Yeah, my, my back of my neck, it's just the hair stood up. Something happened. Notice, um, like I've talked about in past videos, people, atmosphere has to be set for antichrist activity or spiritual, uh, for demon activity to uh, manifest and take place. Is this one of those situations where it had to be dark when Elon or Elon and his mom were around? And notice she said that he wasn't normal. <laughs> he said Elon wasn't normal. And to grow that fast in two or three years, wow, deep. Yeah. Did you, did, did you, did you babysit him for months or years or what? You mean at a time or? Over, over, yeah, over a period of time. How long did you babysit Elon Musk? From the time I was approximately 13 until I was approximately almost 17. And then she called me back when I was in my thirties and I cowered in fear and threw the book away. I, she sent a book to me. I believe it was covered in human skin. I, I pushed it away until my mother get away from me with it. So, she, so I, I was um, completely immersed with. Whenever they called me, I had to come. I could be across the state. I could be in a different life. But when they called me, I had to travel back to where they were telling me to go. I had to go back to Napa. So I didn't always live near them. At times that they moved me away, but when they called, I came. I took a bus, I took a train, I took a, whatever I needed to take, but I was back, somebody would drive me, but I would come back when, when light called me. And one time I was getting all the girls ready for the hooker's ball, the hooker's ball, right. San Francisco. Right. And I remember everybody that was laughing and we were doing the costume. Hooker's ball, hooker's ball in San Francisco. Jim's because sometimes I didn't want to do the slut jobs. I just wanted to be a kid. And so I would, I would make the food or I would babysit or I would help you get in your costume, you know, because I, I prepared drag queens for the show, whatever. Like, you know, I, I was good at behind the scenes. And, and that way I didn't have to be in front on the front man, you know what I mean? Uh, because sometimes I just, you know, I knew in my heart the whole, I don't, I don't want to get your channel shut yeah, 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 we don't, we don't I didn't want to do anything that was abominable to God because exactly. it could feel it in my heart. But right. sometimes I wanted to have a little fun, a little fellowship with the girls, you know. And I remember I was getting everybody ready for the hooker's ball. And we were in Napa and we were right across the street from May's house. And I said, is light going? And the whole room stopped. Like you could hear a pin drop and, and somebody looked at me and said, light doesn't do that kind of wow. stuff. As it should but you know, they were all going to the hooker's ball. See it. I believe she said light. I believe that was a nickname for Elon Musk. She said that, I believe in other videos. As was light going, light doesn't attend events like that. Like the hooker's ball. It wasn't a game for me. She had an agenda. She had an agenda because I thought May was Charlie Manson's girl. But when I asked Imelda, I said, I said, Tosca is her, her youngest, her daughter. I said, is Tosca Charlie's? And Imelda threw up in her mouth, which I know now that she's a spirit. Like, uh, she's possessed. She's gambling, you know. But at the time, Sister. I thought it was my question that made her do that. But now I realize it's, it's an evil spirit coming up. So, and I said, it's Tosca Charlie's? And she did that in her mouth. And she said, no, Errol's his father, her father. So we live in a world within a world within a world, right on the earth, right before us. 
Yes, and there are subcultures of the Nazis uh, and, and the Illuminati and the tell Egyptian really. Right. Let me, do a good, good job. Let me let me catch. I'm going to stop it right there. I featured this, I believe, in the last video. This is Elon's mother. Okay. Notice in the Vogue magazine, I asked the question, is that like ears? Did they have a center like that? Ears of the Balfour one arm up, one down, like as above, so below. You know that 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 figure of the Balfour arm up, one one above, as above, so below, and then legs are crossed, like the letter X, twenty fourth letter alphabet X. And then I showed. Does that say six six? Look at that in her skirt. Six six. And somebody drew this out for me and said, this is six, six, another six, right here. This is uh, Elon Musk's mother. Hold tight, Let's see what else I got. Here's that outline again. Someone drew this out, sent it to me about a year ago. Isn't that something? Is this the family who birthed this child, Elon? to bring us the future, not only of transportation, but of this mark of the beast. 36. Is Elon bringing this to us and we're unaware of his mission and of his role? Are we unaware? Is he being introduced to us on a daily basis? Because the mark of the beast, the antichrist system is coming. Tell me what you think people, if you're, um, if you are in this industry, do you think this is the guy that's gonna bring it? The mark of the beast, Revelation 13? I'm French Chad Pearson, it's deep. Remember, Jesus is alive and well. He is the one, the only one and true God. You need to know him right now before it's too late. Amen.